Hello and welcome to Back Care Month at Experiential Anatomy. I'm Lizzie Lassiter and joining us is the unstoppable Mary Richards. Hi, Mary. Hi, Lizzie. She's our anatomy expert. So we are looking at the back this month, um, really focusing in, and we solicited questions from students and everyone in our experiential anatomy community. What came up over and over, Mary, were questions about forward bending for slip discs. So we have that as a kind of red flag zone as yoga teachers that we, if a student has a slip disc, we don't want to give them forward bends. But what else could we give them? I'll read a specific question from Angela, she writes, apart from avoiding forward bends, what would help a student with a slip disc? I do very gentle back bends with her, but would love some new approaches. Mm -hmm. Help us think about that, Mary. Well, Angela's on the right track. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's just take a moment, though, to talk about the anatomy, <laughs> because that's really where it starts. Uh, so, the reason why forward folds are contraindicated for people with what is commonly referred to as a slip disc, and that means that the disc is uh, bulging or, or ruptured. And the direction that discs typically bulge or rupture is to the back and to the side, exactly where the nerve rootlets lie. So if we do a forward fold, we're actually pushing the disc farther into the nerve rootlet and amplifying compression. Okay. Uh, so if I pull up pocket anatomy, please so do we can actually see it. Yeah, this is one of the great things about learning with Mary and with mom and experiential anatomy is we have this visualization tool called pocket anatomy, which is an app. And we just can really dive in and see, oh, look at this, it's so great, all the layers of the body. So Mary, what are we talking about? Where is a slip disc happening? Okay, so I've given us a posterior view of the lumbar region, and uh, you can see the, hopefully, this kind of gold structures um, mm -hmm. within the vertebral column, and those are nerves. So what we're looking at is something called the, the cauda equina or the horse's tail. And so those are, you know, all of these oh, in here. behind, yeah, kind of behind. Yeah, with, within the opening of the vertebral column, okay, because your vertebral column's not solid structure. It's got all of these foramina where nerve rootlets exit. So... Now, let me strip away the structures, and if we look, we see these beautiful, glossy things. These are the intervertebral discs, and what happens, they have this connective tissue that helps make, give them form and structure, and what happens when the disc bulges or it herniates, meaning the innards of the disc have have uh, exploded beyond their margin, okay. hydromatic. Uh, what happens is, you see this space here? Yeah. This is a, a transverse foramen, uh, an opening on the side of the vertebral body. Well, the nerve rootless exit out of these spaces, and the discs, when there's any sort of injury, they tend to move into that space mm. right against the nerve rootlet so we can imagine then if we then add forward folding the discs get pushed back and so that can cause pain and worse worse than pain uh, numbness and tingling Pain is better, it means the nerve is still functioning. Numbness and tingling means that the blood supply to the nerve has been compromised in such a way that the nerve's no longer firing. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So discs tend to not move forward. They don't tend to go this way because there's this really thick ligament called the anterior longitudinal ligament that tends to keep everyone in place. And then we also have all of our 
our internal organs that are also creating pressure and help, you know, keep us from moving forward. Mm -hmm. Uh, Though there are some disc conditions where the disc slips forward. But typically what we're looking at is a, what's called a posterolateral slippage. So to the Mm -hmm. back and to the side. Okay. So when we move into a forward fold, again, the disc moves, whoops, I don't want black, moves into the nerve rootlets. And what happens then when we counter that, when we go into back extensions, is we're actually moving the disc away from the nerve rootlets. That so sounds back, good. It's so good. So back extensions can be really therapeutic for people with disc problems because it's, it's giving them space. Mm-hmm. and relieving compression. Now, here's the thing about that, though, is they need to be practiced judiciously. <laughs> what was that word? Moderation? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Moderation is key. And a lot of folks with low back pain in particular, or neck pain, especially if they know they have bulging or herniated discs, is they're afraid Mm-hmm. to to do things and so, and they've also been taught to do things like child's pose and things like that because it gives them a stretch. Yeah. Here's the thing about that though. Let's say you have a bulging disc at uh lumbar number 3 for instance. Um which I actually have highlighted. <laughs> uh If you continue with the child's pose and things like that, you're just reinforcing the dysfunctional patterns. So I lost you for a second. Um, Just pick it up with, let's say you have a bulging disc at lumbar three. So let's say you have a disc at, a bulging disc at lumbar number three, and we tend to have um, disc problems at lumbar three, four, and five. Okay. So... You'll, you'll do things like child's pose and the like because it stretches out the muscles of the low back. The thing about that, though, is it doesn't address the situation. It reinforces it in some ways. So we definitely want to do gentle back extensions, but we also want to learn how to establish the imminence of the normal curves of the vertebral column. And that means we want to have those S curves of the vertebral column, because if we look here at pocket anatomy, we can see the vertebral column isn't a straight line. And it's these curves that give it its stability and help distribute load properly. And so we wanna do things that help us sit stand and walk. So we, we want to make sure when we're working with students with uh, disc problems in particular, that we're giving them space and support. Okay. And so that means we adjust their seated position. It means we adjust their Tadasana. And it also means we work with them on uh, core integration, how they are in relationship with their abdominal muscles, what's the relationship between the rib cage and the pelvis? Oh, Mary, I am so excited to learn all of this with you in our back care (laughs) webinar course. Maybe pop back out of uh, pocket anatomy and I'm going to tell people the website to go to if you want to stay in the loop and hear about the course as it launches. And before I do, Mary, be thinking about one um, idea or even exercise or pose you want to give us as we close this video about uh, herniated discs, forward bends, back bends. So if you're interested in this content, which is so rich um, and it's so fun learning with Mary and with mom, you're going to go to www.experiential.com anatomy.yoga and you're going to get on the email list and you're going to get all the information when the course goes live. So Mary, how do you want to close? What can you send us off with today? 
Well, one of the most helpful things that we can do for ourselves, no matter the condition of our vertebral column, is cat-cow. Okay. And the reason why I choose cat-cow is because um, it really helps us mobilize the entire vertebral column, and it allows us to explore the relationship between the curves. And it's pretty accessible. So even if you can't get down on all fours, you can still do cat-cow standing, for instance. There are many varieties, and in the course, we'll definitely share those because we want to have things in our back pocket, if you will, that when we have a a low back emergency, for instance, we can say, oh, if I do this, I know that I'm going to have some relief for it for some time. Mm. So good. I'm laughing because my sweet husband who has a very sort of tricky back at risk back and in my humble yoga teacher opinion should be doing a lot more yoga. (laughs) <laughs> like, does it? Because we're skiing all the time. He, uh, when we were in India this year together, I said, "So, are you going to practice with me in the mornings? You're on vacation. You have lots of time. Let's get on the mat." And he was like, he announced that he was doing a cat cow intensive. <laughs> 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 literally meant all he was doing was cat cow once a day like you know 10 rounds of of cat cow yeah. which for people i mean i think everybody knows it but it's just you know this real simple rounding and then extending and then rounding and he, yeah. and he really did it so wonderfully every day of our whole vacation his cat cow intensive which i thought was so funny and he said that his back did feel better yeah yeah we, you know, and sometimes that's the way we seduce people onto the mat is with one, one thing, one request. Just, you know, try this and let me know how it feels. And then the next thing you know, it's 10 years later and they're, you know, hanging upside down on a yoga wall like a bat. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Mary Richards, where can we find you elsewhere on the internet? You can find me at maryrichardsyoga.com. And on Facebook at A Little Yoga Goes a Long Way. And I'm also on Instagram at Yoga with Mary Richards. So I confess that Instagram confounds me. (laughs) All right. I'm LizzieLassiter.com on Instagram, on Facebook. Come find us. Come say hi. And stay tuned to www.experientialanatomy.yoga. Namaste. Namaste. (laughs) 